All right. Hi everyone, Escape Alien here. So today what I want to do is show off some of the MetaZoo pickups that I've been buying into these last several months. Obviously, as everybody knows, quite a bit is showing up on the market at extremely cheap prices. Not a great time if you're trying to sell off your collection, but if you're a MetaZoo lover and are still buying, it's a great time to be a collector of MetaZoo. Uh, so what I try to do is get a little bit of a flow to what I have to show off today and I tried to stick to cards that are kind of either the unique cards that I plan on keeping, cards that I plan on grading, and then I also got a pretty decent sized handful of slabs that I'm going to be showing today. So we'll go ahead and get into it, but first got to go ahead and switch to human hands. Now that's better. Alright, so what we'll start off with are some of the not necessarily super high-end cards, but uh, unique cards that I don't think would pass uh, when it comes to grading, but are just cool cards to have nonetheless. So we have a full, uh, a couple of the hollows from the Kickstarter uh, poker set. So actually, let me just read them off. Dark Watchers, Wapaloozy, Bell Buzzard, the Pink Mess of Goose Creek Lagoon. And then I got this Sam Sinclair. Unfortunately, it's not gradable. I was hoping to get this in a PSA 10 eventually, uh, but it does have a scratch in the hollow foil. Cool card to have nonetheless. Then you have a couple revive cards here. So Calipode and Alien Bigfoot. And a few Kickstarter cards. Again, just not gradable as far as the condition or centering goes, but Kickstarter is always cool to have. So Kentucky Hellhound. Chibi Quetz, Mermaid Scales, Sinkhole Sam, Hodag, Bunny Man, Kentucky Hellhound, and Hugging Molly. So the next stack that I have here are cards that I would likely eventually grade. I think at least as far as condition goes and as far as centering goes, uh, they would potentially pass as tens. Um, so we'll go ahead and do a stack at a time. There's quite a bit of them. So this is the Revive Grays in Full Hollow. Of course, it's hard for me, even though I'm not a gray, I'm, an, I'm a green alien, but it's hard for me to pass up alien stuff. I just think it's a super, super cool card. I think the artwork's sick. Uh, so that was the first one. Then I have a small stack of play testers. Atmospheric Jellyfish is kind of another sort of alien cryptid lore. Um, but... This card's kind of special to me because there's somebody I know that really likes uh, the atmospheric jellyfish, so I'm going to try to get that graded. Uh, then you just have kind of a stack of general hollows. I just like that play testers. They're kind of a little more on the rare side, right? I think the hollows are only in the 30s. So we have a sunken skeletons, the caster gun, sort of what I have is my little laser gun, midnight lake sigil, snow ghosts, living earth sigil. Hopefully the glare is not too bad on these. Black helicopter, I got two of those, and an ice worm. Uh, so it looks like then we're going to move into some of the Kickstarter cards. A uh, good chunk of reverse hollows, obviously, those being a little less valuable. But eventually, you know, just to throw in here and there, if I run out of regular Kickstarter hollows, I thought it wouldn't be a bad idea to have some of these, especially if they're actually in a gradable condition and centering. So let's first go through what I have for reverse hollows. You have the Jersey Devil, Bigfoot, Lizard Man, Snollagaster, Flatwoods Monster, Sinkhole Sam, Babe the Blue Ox, Metal Man of Alabama, Forest God Amber, Eternal Snowflake, Holy Gem, Lightning Glass, Salem's Witch, Bunny Man, Squonk, Joint Snake, Enfield Monster, Giant Salamander, Chibi Quetz, Hugging Molly, Ghost Deer, Sewer Alligator, and then we start getting into the full hollows. So let me see if I can grab the rest of the full hollows here so we can do those in one stack. All right, so you have a Chacubacabra, Hodag, Sinkhole Sam, Babe the Blue Ox, Sam Sinclair, Growth, Power Up Red, Silver Bullet, Ghost Train, Forest God's Amber, and Mermaid Scales. 
Uh, so I think, you know, as far as kind of the regular sets go, if you're going to grade anything, it makes most sense to grade Kickstarter. Uh, so I just, when I see good deals, whether it be eBay, whatnot, I try to pick up the raw cards and just see. I mean, I've gotten a decent amount of Kickstarter cards that have come back not gradable, but I just put them in the personal collection in the binder. And then the ones that are gradable, I'm building up to hopefully, you know, do some some Kickstarter submissions and just extra cards to throw in the stack. All right, so a few first edition. I mean, there's only a couple cards in first edition, I would say at this point, are worth grading. You know, probably Sam Sinclair, Full Hollow Mothman, and a Full Hollow Chaos Crystal. So I actually have three Sam Sinclairs here that I think are PSA 10 potentials, so I have those put aside. Uh, then kind of getting into some of the promos, unique cards. So we have a Silver Party token, Bronze Salamander Queen token, so I really like the NFT tokens. And uh, I'd love to eventually work out a full set. I don't think I'm ever going to be able to achieve a set of PSA 10s. I don't even know if that's possible. But just a full slab set would be really cool. I have the Golden Distribution, Hopkinsville Goblin, the Green Goblin. So I know this promo, you know, was kind of hard to get. I believe you had to be in stream to achieve this promo. Bronze Metazoo Supporter Medal. And then I just really like Sam Sinclair cards in general. So this is the Gala promo. Then you have a few of these. I forgot exactly where you had to get these promos, but I got two of those. A little second anniversary promo. And then I have that same Sam Sinclair that uh, the other one had the scratch that was showing through on the hollow foil, but this one's actually in great condition. So I'm probably gonna grade that at some point. Uh, revive card there. Felix Stowe Fire Demon. I've just always really liked the Revive line. I really like the artwork in it. So I'll probably get that graded at some point. A pretty minty Prismara. And then these are going to be a stack of autographed or doodled cards. So you have a Bigfoot, Jeff Yates, that is uh, autographed and also doodled. Another Jeff Yates. This one is the Cumberland Dragon from Collecticon. Levelin Rocket by Lily. She just signed it. Second place medal by Michael Peckman. So this one is signed as well as doodled. Super cool little snipe. Afton signature and doodle on Green uh, Clawed Monster. Another Collecticon. This one by Chris, uh, Chris Campman. Another Afton uh, signature and doodle on the Kinderhook blob to arms. Then you have a Poncho signed Prism Beam. Very pretty artwork. This is a Poncho signed uh, UFO promo. Um, this one, I'm not sure. I've never graded anything in the cellophane. Eventually, I'd like to try to get these slabbed and authenticated just because you know, I'm a slab guy. Um, but this one is signed on the cellophane, so that might be kind of an interesting process. Sinister Shadows. So this was a Caster Cup stamp card, and this is actually a staff signed card. So I'm assuming that's Sky Lee's signature, but he also put um, dots along the artwork. Just kind of made it more unique, I think, because there's black dots around the creature. You have uh, red dots. All right, then we have a Victor Larson signed Babe the Blue Ox in first edition. Also doodled Babe there. Obviously, I think Victor Larson signatures. Um, I'd love to collect more, but I think since he's working on Nom Nom, you know, these are just really cool signatures to have. It's kind of like, you know, the, the I don't know if it's necessarily the start to his career in uh, kind of being a more notable artist. Um, I'm sure he's done stuff in the past, but just cool early history. This card's very unique, so as I said, I really like the Sam Sinclair uh, promo cards, but this one has quite a bit of signatures on it. Uh, so you have Lily, Afton, Jeff Yates, and then I'm not exactly sure on the signature there, so I'd have to look into that one more, but four signatures on one card, pretty good, especially considering I know people usually had to pay for artist signatures, so... 
I mean, even if they were charging 30 bucks a pop, this is $120 worth of signatures on one card. All right, then we have a Kelsey signature, which let me just make sure. Yeah, you know what? That signature that I wasn't uh, sure of, I think that's uh, Kelsey Cicino. So there you go. So Kelsey signature on a full hollow first edition Mothman. Pretty stoked on that one. All right, then we have a Hero Quest card, Stars Robot. It's another Kelsey signature there. And then we have a first edition full hollow Chaos Crystal signed by Poncho. 2022 on there. So these are going to be cards that you'll eventually see. I'm sure most of these cards will end up getting PSA graded. But um, as you can see, I've built up quite a big stack. Still grading a lot of meta zoos, so you know most of this stuff. I I would actually say all this stuff is just for the personal collection. So if you're asking why grade a failed card game, failed TCG, uh, it's because I like collecting them. It brings me joy. So I'm sure you'll see those in future PSA submissions. All right, next I wanted to move on to. Some graded cards, these ones, this stack right here are pickups that are from non-PSA non -PSA grading services. Um, so I'm a PSA guy, I think most of the market is. I wanna say PSA has like 80% of market shares. Um, but if I see a good deal on slab cards, I know some of these companies are a little bit more notable, then I'm still gonna pick it up, especially if I really want the card. So first off, Gotta make sure, so, or once in a while, I'm just checking to make sure the glare is not too bad. But first off, we have an 8.5 CGC uh, purple Jersey Devil token card. Um, as I said, I want to eventually have all of these uh, token cards in slabs. I'm not sure if I'm going to be OCD about it and try to get them all in PSA and cross grade uh, if I ever get more of these that are not PSA cards. But for now, happy with that. Okay, so this is Diamond Grading Service, or DGS. Uh, really pretty unfamiliar with this grading uh, card company, but I am seeing more cards popping up with DGS grades on them. This is a Gem Mint 10 Bunny Man Reverse Hollow Kickstarter card. Like I said, if I can get Kickstarter cards cheap enough and it makes sense, then even if it's not a PSA card, I'll still pick it up. Here we have a Kickstarter Full Hollow Quetzalcoatlus in a DGS 10. Just a solid card, you know, I'm sure this one might even be worthy of cross grading eventually to a PSA. Alright, we have a first edition DGS Full Hollow Grim Reaper. Beautiful artwork, controversial artwork having the Grim Reaper holding what looks to be a baby. Um, but I always like Poncho's dark artwork, it's just a solid card. So, nice little pickup there. I have a couple AGS cards. This is a full hollow Piazza Burden AGS 9. And then we have a Dragon of Oconto Falls by Sky Lee in full hollow. I've always really loved this artwork. I'm always stoked when I pull this card when I open up Wilderness. That is an Gem Mint 10 for AGS. I know AGS is the one that uses kind of the Artificial intelligence, more robotics in the grading process. I've seen AGS being used more and more as time goes on. Uh, but super cool card to have in a uh, slab. All right, another CGC card here, Born from the Earth. It's just a first edition, uh, full hollow, but I got a CGC pristine 10. Another diamond grading service, Kickstarter Reverse Hollow Walking Sam in a Gem Mint 10. Diamond grading service, Bat Squatch Reverse Hollow in a Gem Mint 10. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Bat Squatch is probably one of my top 10 favorite cryptids. I just think he looks super cool. Then we have a CGC 9.5 Ingrid Cold. Reverse Hollow by Poncho. Super cool artwork once again. Then a 9.5 in PCG Prismara. Prismara's always, you know, what is it? 
besides getting a serialized car such as a ticket or a green man I'd say it's your best pull in wilderness so got it pretty cheap and pretty stoked on that deal all right so that's gonna do it for the miscellaneous grading card companies moving on to some PSA cards so more of the NFT token cards so we have the blank bat uh, blank black bat token card it's a mouthful to say a lot of these cards I picked up from uh, Meta Snipe super cool guy uh, but he had a really solid collection of these tokens and I was eyeing them for a long time so super stoked to have uh, cards where I know exactly where they came from have a chipped Jersey Devil token card here and this is in a PSA 9 then we have a MetaZoo pin club card this is a UFO card and that's in a PSA 10 full hollow how could I not the alien inside me this card was just calling then we just have a hero quest malicious hardware in a PSA 8 this one I'm not exactly sure why I picked it up I probably just got it super cheap so just a random slab in the collection moving on to the next stack of PSA cards like I said I got a lot of them They're going cheap all right, Crystal Ball Seance by Poncho. Very pretty artwork. Purple is my favorite color. That got a PSA 10. We have a Wilderness Full Hollow Snipe in a PSA 10. A Turbo Charge from Wilderness Full Hollow PSA 10. Bigfoot Full Hollow PSA 10. And again, my logic with these cards is it's not worth really grading cards. I mean, you're, you're totally losing money. The card itself, most of these hollows are essentially worthless when it comes to monetary value. But if you can get them under that $15 grading fee, or I guess up to $15 if you really want the card, then it totally makes sense to pick these cards up if they're a PSA 10 um, for under $15, because you're basically just getting it for what it would cost to grade the card. All right, we have a PSA 10 Full Hollow Stone Man from Wilderness. PSA 10 Awful from Wilderness in Full Hollow. I just absolutely love the awful artwork. Definitely one of the top cards in the Wilderness set. Um, so to get it under that $15 price range in a PSA 10, very, very stoked to add that to the collection. All right, then we have a Lechuza from UFO in PSA 10 Full Hollow. PSA 10 Griddle Greaser Pete, Full Hollow from UFO. A PSA 10 Headless Coal Miner from Nightfall. Very cool having some Nightfall cards in slabs. All right, then we have a Boil Over in PSA 10 Full Hollow from Nightfall. PSA 10 Abduction in Full Hollow from Nightfall. Again, the alien in me, hard to say no to anything alien themed. We have a PSA 10 Full Hollow Born from the Earth in Nightfall, from Nightfall. PSA 10 there. And then we have a Prism Beam, Full Hollow PSA 10 from Nightfall. Alright, and we are moving on to our last stack of PSA graded cards. So, Divine Covenant, Full Hollow PSA 10 from Nightfall. We have a Nightfall Spellbook promo, that is a PSA 9. Must have got this one for pretty cheap. Full Hollow Ingrid Cold PSA 10 from Nightfall. Full Hollow PSA 10, Righteous Reckoning from Nightfall. Very cool artwork by Poncho. The uh, beat up Wendigo there. 
All right, moving on to a little bit of Cryptid Nation first edition. We have a PSA 10 Phoenix Rain. That is also by Poncho. Next, we have a Cryptid Nation first edition PSA 10 Chessy in full hollow. Then we have a PSA 10 Cryptid Nation Growth in full hollow. Cryptid Nation first edition PSA 10 Silver Bullet in full hollow. Cryptid Nation first edition PSA 10 Uncle Sam in full hollow. That is a PSA 10. Cryptid Nation first edition PSA 10 New Year's Celebration promo. That's in full hollow. Pretty stoked to have that. I've always wanted this card in the PSA 10. Got it for a very good price. All right, the card that everybody loves from Cryptid Nation First Edition. We have a PSA 10 Full Hollow Mothman. Very stoked. As a collector, I never really thought that I would be able to get these kinds of cards. Um, you know, obviously, you have two steps above this. You'd have the Kickstarter Full Hollow and then the sample. Not sure. Kickstarter, hoping to get one eventually. We'll see if prices keep uh, settling or if maybe I can eventually snag one for a good enough deal, but stoked to start off with a solid PSA 10 Cryptid Nation First Edition Mothman. Then we have a Cryptid Nation First Edition PSA 10 Power Up Red. Got that little, little Mothman in the center of that artwork, but very much love that card. All right, Cryptid Nation First Edition PSA 10 Full Hollow Jersey Devil. Another one of my favorite cryptids, definitely in my top 10. So I'm very stoked to have that in a PSA 10. Now we have a PSA 9 Cryptonation First Edition, Quetzalcoatlus. Um, actually, excuse me, this is a Kickstarter. So that makes sense that I bought it in a slightly lower grade, but. Uh, you know, anything Kickstarter for a reasonable price in a slab. Somebody already did the work of grading it. Stoked to get that in the collection. Then we have a PSA 9 GB Mothman Reverse Hollow. Uh, not the most desirable Kickstarter card in my opinion, but uh, it is still a good pickup for a cheap enough price. Then we have a PSA 9 Reverse Hollow Snallagaster in Kickstarter. So again, getting those cheap. So the last thing I just want to kind of talk about, go over, I have also been buying some either near complete or complete Cryptid Nation First Edition. Um, most of these sets I try to set complete myself, but if I can get Cryptid Nation First Edition for a reasonable price where they are near complete, of course these cards are missing the first edition Hollow Mothman in them, and then I've been kind of sourcing binders myself, just used binders. I'm not going to get a ton ton of these, but if I get them for a good enough deal, then why not pick it up? It is the most iconic of the MetaZoo sets as far as just starting the whole movement of MetaZoo. Uh, so there's just a couple cards in both of these that I need to pick up in order to have both of them complete, uh, but you know, as far as first edition goes, boxes are still kind of around that $100 mark. So still kind of hard to justify just doing mass box openings to complete uh, collections. So getting these ones for a reasonable price, uh, just super stoked on that. And these are the last things I want to show off for this video. I do want to give a couple more shout outs. Shout out to, as I said before, Metasnipe. Um, I know he's kind of working on some projects himself, so I'm definitely going to stay in touch with him, but I'm stoked to have some of his personal cards in my collection. Shout out to Bunny Man. I picked up a decent amount of Kickstarter cards at a very good price uh, from him, and I know he's getting married. He might even be getting married this week, so hope that goes well, and um, congratulations to him. Thanks again for the sweet pickups. I know he was selling a decent amount of his personal collection to help fund his wedding. And the last major shout out I want to give is to 
Bruno Breaks. So I had him sign this binder, it was the last stream, but Bruno is starting a business called Ghost Mounts, and it is a minimalist uh, graded card holder and he's doing a super good job. He 3D prints a bunch of really cool things for TCGs. And I do plan on, he sent me two of those ghost mounts uh, when I purchased a bunch of stuff from him. I do plan on doing a little demo on the channel uh, because I think it's a great idea for a product because you can just kind of, you know, have a non-cumbersome wall mount for your slabs if you want to show them off and you can just kind of you know, put them around this individual card. So I think it's a great idea. He does great work with his uh, 3D printing. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more of what he comes up with. So I'll put it a link in the description of his product to his Instagram. So you guys can check out the ghost mounts yourself and the other uh, 3D printed items that he has. I definitely think I'm going to be hitting him up to see if he can come up with a few other things. But uh, that's going to do it for this video. Obviously, I think this is probably going a little bit long now. It's almost half an hour, but I'm still buying MetaZoo like crazy. Like I said, if you uh, were a collector of MetaZoo and the cards still bring you joy, I know for some people it kind of became a bitter topic. They don't enjoy their collections as much because of everything that went on with the company. And I understand that. I understand for some people it's better to just kind of get rid of their collections, you know, and they don't like how it ended, they don't like how things were run, they don't like how people were treated. I get it. Uh, for me though, I just kind of look at it as I get to keep collecting the massive amount of MetaZoo products that are out there for a much, much cheaper and reasonable price. Uh, so every once in a while I think I'll do a collection buying video like this. Uh, this one is probably three months in the making for things that I've been picking up here and there. So hopefully in the future I can kind of get it down to maybe like a month or two. Uh, so it doesn't take this long to go through everything. But you're going to see me doing a lot of PSA submission videos in the future. I submit more than just MetaZoo because I do collect more than just MetaZoo when I do PSA runs. But a significant amount of my PSA runs are MetaZoo. So I'm super stoked to get cards like that. If you guys ever want to trade, if you ever want to see if I'm interested in buying stuff or if you want to potentially buy things from me, uh, I always have my contact information in the description of my videos. Hit me up. Um, I love helping other people fill in the gaps of their collections and I'm still buying stuff if it's a reasonable price. So anyways, if you guys um, you know want to help support, it's always helpful if you give me a like and a comment. I always appreciate you guys checking out the shenanigans on the channel and me being a weirdo as an alien. All right, well, thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Peace.